Hi guys, my name is Borro Dante. I'm still a bit sick, so let's do some tutorials. Today we're gonna talk about something you guys requested before, ground reflection and ground shadow. So let's dig in. <clears throat> Let's start with a character standing on the ground, some kind of dummy dude to illustrate what we want to talk about. <clears throat> Gotta drink a lot of fluids to get well. That's literally all I do to get well. Also, I sleep a lot. So here I have some kind of silhouette of I don't even know who. But in this situation, we need two things defined for our purposes. Number one is the line of horizon that I already visualized here. And the second one is gonna be the direction of the light. So let's say it's gonna be from that angle like this. Which means that the light source is coming a bit from the back top right. So let's start with the shadow. Now, I want to make sure that we define very clearly what exactly shadow and reflection in this scenario is. So you guys would have a perfect understanding of what you are going for. To show a shadow on the ground, we need to make sure we understand what the shadow represents. The best way to approach this would be to imagine that the point where this light source is, like a light bulb or a street light that is right here actually, so it's pretty close to the object and to the ground, so it will bring a certain distortion to the shadow. Now, to understand what exact shape of the shadow will be, we have to imagine that this light source is actually the camera. Camera. Like, uh, we should imagine looking from the point of view of this light source. Let's say we're actually here, we're looking at this character like this. This basically means that we look downwards at this guy from a little bit of a 45 degree. Downwards means we're gonna have this kind of perspective, guys, going vertically downwards to the bottom vanishing point. The character will be right here. Kind of like this, far from perfect, but clear enough to make a point. So this is the very top point of the hat. So we're looking at the character from the top and from the back. Now, the shadow in this case will be literally this. The shadow is everything that the light source can't see if we're looking from its very point of view. Now, next part is to actually apply this understanding, right? So what we do is we draw lines from the light source like this on the very edges of the character. Now we see that the shadow will obviously go beyond the screen in this case. That's because the light source is so low that it will actually distort the shadow so much that it will spread away to a great distance. Next up is we have to imagine where exactly our light source is located, comparing to where the character is. And for that, let's drag down a vertical line like this, and let's imagine if this is the point where the character stands, where do we see this light source to be? So, it's a bit from the back, right, as we defined earlier. So, it will be probably quite further away like this. And after that, we connect both of these dots with a line and extend it further away like this. Here, we can see that on this line, somewhere where this top of the head line will meet this bottom line, that's where the shadow will end. That will be the top of the head of the shadow on the ground. Next, we define all the middle points of the shadow on the ground the same way, dragging them from the point of where the light source is, going through the butt point right here, we'll get where will be the point where the gap between the legs will end. So you see the distortion is pretty strong, we have really short legs, because we'll look at the legs at a much shorter distance here than the rest. It's much bigger for our light source from its point of view. So the rest is gonna stretch a whole lot. So this is just for the overall understanding of how the actual shadow gets projected onto the ground. But 
but we're not engineered we don't have to actually do this the rest of the job we really should do relying on our own three-dimensional vision for instance i think this will go a lot wider actually probably like this and that's where the arm this part will probably start and since our character is facing kind of this way that means that this arm is a bit lower for our light source than this one so that means that the second arm will appear a bit further away and go away like this so this is the parallel here and somewhere far far away in the distance we'll see an actual shadow of the head way over there so basically our character is distorted kind of like this all right so this is our shadow for a character standing so closely to the light source of course in most cases except for some very noir scenes of a detective walking out of the corner of the street with a really strong light casting this giant shadow you know like in the old movies we don't usually see such a giant shadow because any light source that is so low is usually not very bright that means that somewhere around here the light itself will go dark enough that we'll basically won't see all of this at all. But this is where it would go if the light source would be bright enough. And of course, if we'll imagine that the light source is really far away, meaning if it's the sun, same angle would just apply literally everywhere. So in this case, it's just parallel. And this kind of picture would look a bit different. We would probably see him like... Uh, well, kind of like this. The point is that in here, feet are a lot smaller than the head because there is the perspective distortion. We have this kind of perspective going on. But when it's at such a great distance, basically it's gonna be vertical. So nothing will get smaller as it goes further away. That means that we're still looking at the top of the head right here. The angle is the same, but there is no distortion of the size. And it will result the same way in the shadow from the sun, comparing to the shadow from the light bulb that's nearby. The head will be the same size as the actual head. And to get the projection going on, we just have to grab any of these parallel lines and imagine basically the same thing, but it doesn't really matter where we will choose this point because distance doesn't make a difference in this case that's kind of the point where the head will end and it will be not inflated at all and all the rest of the body parts will be pretty much the same only longer or shorter depending on what this angle is so at noon the character will be completely short just all the body parts compressed together because we'll be actually looking at the character just like this so in this case, we just have a long enough shadow and no widening. Here's the butt point and everything else. Now, of course, everything we went through right now, you never do in an actual painting. Please don't do that, because it's not gonna get you very far to pay so much attention to the geometry of a shadow on the ground. You just have to keep this in mind to understand what you're doing when you're assuming the shape of the shadow. So basically just remove all of that and just think about like, okay, so that's the point of where the light source is. I uh, kind of will imagine that, but I don't have to like actually draw all those lines or anything because no one cares about the shadow on the ground. It just shouldn't be way off. Keep in mind this kind of line always so it would actually feel like it's uh, on the ground and not standing up on you somehow. And here we go. Feels kind of like a legit shadow from some kind of a street light that's a bit further away than this, but not sun as well since we have some sort of widening. Now for the ground reflection. The basic idea of a ground reflection, it's a very specific kind of reflection, right? Because ground is a perfectly horizontal surface, so all the reflection will be vertically inverted. So 
the very basic approach would be just to flip the image. And it's a lot easier when you are mirroring something that is not touching the reflecting surface. Meaning if there wouldn't be any characters standing on the ground, but there would be um, a really nice looking town out there or trees or whatever, it's all together and also looks like just a pile of feces. But the reflection would be literally just kind of flipping everything upside down. And here we go, this is some kind of lake next to a junkyard, I guess. But in our case, it won't really work. Because even if there's some kind of background like this, right, that we do still can mirror the same way, just mirroring everything like this, then where is the part where you mirror the guy? He shouldn't be mirroring over there, otherwise his legs would be here and the head would be somewhere around here. That wouldn't work. So obviously we kind of have to mirror from the point where he stands, right? In here. Now it looks kind of legit. But what if the situation would be a lot more complex, with a complex angle of the camera and everything? That situation would require an extra understanding of what you do when you are creating a reflection. Let's talk about that. So the approach is kind of close to the same thing we did with the light source, imagining that the light source is the point of view. But in this case, we're not gonna take the point of view of any light source, we're gonna take the point of the reflected camera. Check this out. So right now we're looking from the side, meaning this is the camera, literally the point of view of our eyes as we're looking at the character right here. Now we can see that the horizon line is a bit lower than the head. That means that the character is a bit taller than our camera, because literally this is the point of the horizon. That's how it works. And we're looking at the character and we see him like this. But what happens when we look at the reflection on the ground? Let's imagine like we want to find the reflection of the, uh, this part where the legs meet. So we have to imagine the point on the ground that will reflect this ray of light coming out of the camera and reflect it to the butt of the character at the same angle where it hits the ground and where it leaves it. Now this is kind of hard to comprehend when you really want to understand what the objects will look like when they're reflected upside down. And the best way to understand it is to imagine the following. So let's continue this reflected light ray downwards like this. And this is the point of our camera in the reflected world. And in here, from this point, how we look at the character and at everything else beyond him is what we'll actually see on the ground right here. Looking from this angle, we'll obviously see the character a bit from the bottom. Just literally flip the image and try to look at your character that you've just built standing upwards. Imagine looking at him from the bottom, like this, from under the ground. Sort of like this, but not as compressed, I guess. So this will make the reflection of the guy right here. And whatever we see at the very horizon will still follow the same logic. It's just, again, great distance annihilates any need in actual angles or distortions. So a lot further away over there, it will almost have the same angle as this camera when we look at uh, something close to the horizon, you know. So in that case, it just comes down to just mirroring whatever is going on. So this is the under the hood of how you can comprehend what's going on when we're talking about this kind of reflection. Now let's talk about a bit of a different situation when there is actual structure like a building or a doorway next to our character for instance. So let's imagine a little bit of the perspective, right? Uh, this is obviously the horizon, that's where the lines are vertical generally, but we can imagine that 
there's a bit of a distortion like this, not a very strong one. Since the horizon line is above the center of the screen, we can imagine that the camera is tilted downwards a little bit. Otherwise, why do we see more ground than the sky over the horizon? For that, we need to tilt the camera downwards, hence the vanishing point. And the character is a little bit distorted that way as well, but it kind of depends on how close to the character we are with our camera. So let's say there's a little bit of distortion like this, and same way we'll go with the doorway. Okay, and this thing, let's make this actually a room like this. Okay, so our character is standing in the doorway in some room, and the floor in here is highly reflective. So what's interesting that the reflection, following the whole idea of the upside down camera, reflection will actually continue the rules of the perspective of our world in the mirrored world. These vertical lines will actually go on like this, making the door even smaller and the whole room like this as well. So we literally continue all the vertical lines going downwards the same way, looking like they actually go further away from us. Because for the mirror clone of our camera, the character is also further away from this camera right here. In here we're closer to the character since we're on the same line with him like this. And in this case, there's a greater distance. And when we're so close to the walls and everything, we can actually see this a lot stronger. So this is literally what's gonna happen. Like in this case, again, it's like we're looking at this room from under the ground and the character will do the same thing it will go further away following these perspective guides so again in many cases all these things aren't necessary to actually build and follow all the rules but even in this case when you're painting this kind of reflection just the silhouette of the character it's still a good idea to Keep in mind that this character is going a bit further away from the camera and in the reflection we're kind of looking at the character from the bottom to the top. For instance, in here, let's say there's some kind of long jacket on him, right? From our point of view, since the horizon line is here, this round edge of the jacket will be a bit pointing downwards like this with its well, general cylinder approach, right? So this ellipse curve right here, a little bit. But in here, we're looking at the character from the bottom. That means we will see the rear edge of that jacket. That's happening all the way back there around the butt of the character. So we're gonna imagine this kind of situation and the legs coming out of there like this. We don't have to paint through all of this, but what will change from your understanding of this is that you won't just copy the legs from this corner to this the same way, you will actually add this kind of curve like this, because you understand that you're looking at the jacket from the bottom. Same in here, like this. Only a lot longer, obviously, because the angle is far from being strong enough to make the character so short. Okay, so here we go. Now you know the geometry of the ground reflection and ground shadow. This sounds really complicated, but generally the explanation is complicated, so you would memorize how you should think about what's reflected or what kind of shadow is casted to make a proper shape for it. In the end, it still goes to the bottom line, reflection on the ground just kind of mirrors the image upside down, and the shadow just creates a long, dark spot on the ground starting from where the character is and going away from the light source. But there are certain nuances to make it look a lot more real and three-dimensional. So here we go. Hope this is helpful. And I thank you for watching if you did. I guess it did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Look from a different angle. Ironically, I keep forgetting to look at this camera every once in a while. Do whatever you want, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! <coughs> Scratch that.
Now for the reflection. 